<coughs> Good morning. Thank you very much for spending your precious time this morning with me to learn a little bit about the chances and challenges of choral singing and choral education in South Africa. Thank you very, very much for the kind invitation to come to your country, for me to get inspired by your culture and to enjoy your hospitality. Kursenem. Please allow me to introduce myself because it's probably interesting to know, know why a German is living in South Africa. My name is Martin Berger. I am German and I live and I teach at Stellenbosch University in South Africa. And until last year, I lived an ordinary life as a professor in choral conducting and a director of music in Germany. I studied in Germany, in Saarbrücken and Düsseldorf. I had the very privilege to spend some time in Sweden to study with the great, great Erik Eriksson, Anders Ebi and Gary Graydon. And this Swedish ideal of choral sound was a formative experience for me. As a professor in choral conducting, I tried to focus on mediation techniques. How can we bring choral music for transfer to children, to adolescents, to adults? This all changed in 2013 when the University of Stellenbosch in South Africa offered me a position and appointed me in this position and asked me to restructure the choral music and the choral conducting program at this famous university. Introducing South Africa is for me very easy because I'm regulating this country since 1996. I have developed kind of a love for this country and um, I really love living there. South Africa is vibrant and diverse and diversity is a little bit a sub-theme of what I want to tell you about my work. South Africa is a multi-ethnic and a multilingual country. Diversity in South Africa, amongst others, is therefore represented in the array of languages spoken in the country. This brings us to the first problem because at the very core of each culture is poetry, is song, is folklore, is story. And in South Africa, each of these facets is embedded within 11 cultures. South Africa is a singing country. One of the world's greatest variety of choral traditions is to be found in the Western Cape. Black African choirs, Cape Malai choirs, choirs of the English Anglican tradition, Afrikaans choirs, even German choirs, the Heinrich Schutzwochen in South Africa, uh, they attract about five, six hundred people uh, and it's, it's amazing to see uh, what's happening there. Talent in South Africa seems to be unlimited. Music is the integral part of the African life and plays a pivotal role in all things South Africans do. Nearly all presidential gatherings, please imagine, are opened with song and dance. University residences compete in choir singing on a quite high level. University choirs of South Africa are multiple prize winners and inter at international competitions and so on. Despite all this exciting news, two aspects as, uh, as a foreigner in this country are worrying me. If I may say, South Africa is musically spoken a fairly illiterate country. Very few children, adolescents and adults can properly read music as this is the case for, for example in Hungary. Choirs are often trained and drilled instead of educated and enhanced. And the second thing is, 20 years after apartheid, musical knowledge is not yet equally accessible for everybody. Especially in the previously disadvantaged communities, a lot of talent is to be found, but very few people can give their talent direction. Choir singing is part of the society, especially amongst the black population, where singing forms a unity with dancing and a long tradition of storytelling. South Africa is therefore in need for more formal training for choral conductors and singers. My university is one of the very few universities in South Africa which offer a full academic program in choral conducting. 
Apart from the practical training of future choral conductors and singers, great importance is attached on developing and promoting mediation techniques for a diverse and multicultural singing society in South Africa. My paper aims to restart a process of reflection and discussion about multi-ethnical choir music in South Africa. I will reflect on how can singing belong to everyone and how we can use choral music as a means of up upliftment, especially in previously disadvantaged communities. My argument is that South Africa is at the moment in kind of the same state where Hungary was uh, 90 years ago when Kodai started reforming the Hungarian music education. I will argue that we are in need for a new approach in music education which is strongly linked to choral conducting and which is inspired by the Kodai approach. I'm German. Let's ask four South Africans why choral music is important for their lives and for the society. I think because of the struggles that this country has gone through, music can always be um, a refuge for so many people. And because it, it touches you in, in a way that mm. nothing, nothing else can really do. And it moves you. And it can console you when it's in very difficult times. And um, why I think choral singing is important and useful um, for the individual um, is because it develops musicianship, your own personal musicianship. Um, and I can certainly see that um, from in, in my own career, from right from when I was a, a young boy of about nine years old, singing in the Drakensberg Boys Choir, right up until the end of my studies, which I completed last year. Um, for communities, I think choral conducting is important um, in South Africa because it really does help us to bridge gaps. I think it's unique in South Africa because of our history. So because we've gone through many struggles, um, our apartheid has been the biggest, and then coming out of that, and now you know, we sing in a choir with fellow black students, with fellow colored students, which previously wasn't possible. So now we're really able to make music together post apartheid. To understand a little bit um, of, of the history of South Africa, to make it very briefly, you have to look in history and 1994 is a crucial change in, for South Africa. With the end of apartheid in 1994, a history of nearly three centuries came to an end in which choral music and music education in South Africa provided a means of fostering segregation. Before 1994, ethnic groups and cultural identities were grouped together by the segregation laws of apartheid. Being divided became a principle for the beginning of a child's educational life. <coughs> Learners were divided in schools for white children and schools for non-white children. <coughs> the non-white pupils were divided as far as their culture was concerned. The educational system in South Africa was inherited from Western European countries, specifically the Netherlands and Great Britain. Schools for white included choral music as a part of the core curriculum. Black South Africans who pursued an education were also encouraged to study choral music, but were restricted to learning Western European choral music. Outside the formal education system, choral diversity blossomed. South Africans used music as a means of expressing, expressing their cultural identity 
under the policy of apartheid. Amongst the black population, choral music was also used to express political opinions, resistance or protest. Traditional rights were used to strengthen their society. Amongst the white population, choral music was sometimes used to transport white nationalist opinion. Both tendencies made the gap between the different choral cultures larger and wider. Choral music in South Africa had become a means to foster segregation. And this changed dramatically in 1994 because after the fall of apartheid, many social and political leaders in South Africa were intent on laying the foundation of a unified nation which respects the different ethnic cultures. South Africa has 11 national languages and I think it's the only national anthems which consists of different languages. Following the first democratic elections in 1994, the ruling political party in South Africa, the African National Congress, developed the Rainbow Nation concept. Choral music in post-1994 South Africa would ideally be multi-ethnic in composition and nature. Music should function as a tool of the formation, development and expression of a new identity. And what previously was a means to foster segregation is now meant as a means to build up a new multi-ethnic society. This brings us to the connection to this symposium because music becomes belongs to everybody. But how can we make it real? The solution is very easy. We must provide children with better skills and Kodai's thoughts can help us with that. We have a dual pers uh, perspective at the university. We have an inside and an outside policy. Inside means we must change our education system to provide the new generation of music teachers with more skills inspired by Kodai's philosophy and the principle of his method and his teaching. But the second thing is we must go out of our universities. We must find new structures to provide choral education to those who previously had no access to choral education and who are probably not childs. And this brings new challenges. This idea is of course fascinating, but it creates enormous challenges for me, for my students and for the training of choral conductors. Let me share four important thoughts with you. We all know that choral music <coughs> depends on role models. We all have one teacher who inspired us. We all have one choir which we sang in which inspired us. But for multicultural choral singing there's not it's not such a common phenomenon in the world and very few conductors have experience with it. 
One of the very few renowned role models is the World Youth Choir, a project choir that functions on a temporary basis and which composes various cultures. Choral music depends largely in uniformity within musical bounds. Communalities have to be agreed upon for vowels, vibrato, yes or no, score reading, skills, control of dynamics in order to produce an optimum choir sound. Choral music depends on repertoire. What we call culture is the sum of our communal beliefs, principles, traditions, behaviors, artifacts. At the very core of our culture is poetry, song, folklore, stories. But in South Africa, as I have said, each of these facets is embedded in, in 11 cultures. Some have overlapping areas, this is true, but nine of them come from African roots and two from European roots. Choral music depends on cultural identity. The formation of cultural identity, I believe so, relies heavily on music. Culture is not an independent thing. It is what we are as people. Our cultural guides, our culture guides us in how to behave and it's the expression of our values and beliefs. Cultural identity is also an awareness of a shared experience. We can express that through music and music making. The problem in South Africa is that for many people, this shared experience is the history of apartheid. This brings us to a point where we, before we start teaching at universities, have to renegotiate our teaching because of the new society. If we want to interact with an intercultural approach of teaching choral music in South Africa, we must interact with different understandings of the word aesthetics. The cultural space to which our students and singers belong influences their modes of perception and subsequent reflection of music. What criteria should we use to reach value judgments? What is good music? Are our categories of musical and aesthetical thinking universally fixed? Or are they conditioned by our respective and my European culture? Are different aesthetics concepts of singing and choral music of equal worth? Or can criteria we use to define good quality choral music claim transcultural validity? The last question is not easy to answer because the first reflect would be, of course, everything is on, on equal worth. But if everything is on equal worth, then we have an aesthetic arbitrariness. So we have no, no transcultural values in music. What we experience, what I experience as a teacher in such a um, society is we have ex extremely different singing perceptions, learning perceptions, and social perceptions. To make a long story a bit short, the sound ideal is completely different, uh, an African, a black African sound ideal is completely different from Western voice production. Sound quality in black choirs is very forced, especially amongst the male choirs. The question on how important is intonation? We have fallen in love, me as well, with the idea of intonation being one of the main criteria to judge a performance. In intonation, of course, it's important. But the African singing, the if, uh, uh, African folk song have developed a different oral concept of intonation because their folk songs are mainly based on hexatonic African scales. Intonation for them is less of a priority. And this brought me to a thing that I often think about. Intonation is only impressive. Rhythm is rousing. But only a good sound can touch your soul. Vowels of the African language are darker than we like it in Western choral music. Being formed at the back of the mouth, they produce a deeper sound than those of English, Afrikaans, and other languages commonly used in the Western choral tradition. If you sing like that in your singing lesson in this building, 
your teacher will, will probably tell you you're singing wrong. Blending and uniformity of vowels or choral tone is really a challenge. Speech inflections. Some African languages are tonal languages. That means the same word has a different meaning depending on the pitch at which it is spoken. Some of my students like to capture the tonal patterns when they sing. So there will be a subconscious rising of pitch in the singing, which may often be regarded as faulty intonation from a Western perspective. For a homogeneous choir, phrasing is natural. In a multi-ethnical choir, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. What is learning? For a black African, learning means shaping individuals to build a community. That's core of, of the Ubuntu philosophy. I am because we are. My right to develop, to grow as an individual, means I have to give back to the community. This is a thinking which, especially in Germany, um, is probably a little bit foreign in today's time. Individuality is the key word. And a very interesting thing is when we work with, with these children in, in the township is can one learn how to sing? You sing. You don't need to learn that because singing is, is part of your daily life. Why do you spend minutes to work on a bar or a phrase? That's totally foreign. Learning um, for an African choir means learning by way of rote. It's an orally concept. You sing from memory without thoughts of a meaning and sometimes in a quite mechanical way. A very interesting observation is that tonic sulfur is established amongst black African choirs. Brought by German and English and Dutch missionaries in the late 19th century, this tonic sulfur relative solmization system has established so deeply that most of uh, the African choir conductors see it as an African system. And for us, this is a very interesting point because this is the connection to a, to a Kodai method. We have different social perceptions. Why do we sing in a choir? You have listened to this girl, escapism from poverty, from trucks. Not a look for, for art music is often one of the reasons. What we have done is we have founded a choir academy and we want to offer support, knowledge and formal training to choirs and conductors who previously had no or poor access to formal music education. We want to identify talented young musicians and provide them with help and guidance for a possible future course at studies at our university. We want to evolve efficient mediation techniques based on their folk music for the development of a holistic musicianship through choral singing based on the Kodai method. Chor choirs and choral conductors can apply for professional development aid through the division of choral conducting at my university. Experienced students, my postgraduate students, will adopt a choir and share their knowledge and experience. These students are supervised and benefit from the teaching experience. Raised funds shall provide the choirs regularly with the greatest possible exposure to concerts on high standard. These choirs will be motivated to ac actively participating in special occasion concerts at my music department, organized by my division of choral conducting. So that means they meet and they exchange their knowledge. Seminars and workshops on different levels will expose choirs and conductors to knowledge of a high standard. We have very few principles. We want to interact with a community which is already existing. That means this choir, this black African choir that you listen to, is a choir school, a private choir school in the township of Kailicha. It's a private initiative and we support that. We do not start new groups. Repertoire is chosen by the choirs and conductors. We make suggestions, but we do not interfere in their decisions. What we do is we insist in a healthy voice technique. Some of the choirs love opera music. Some of the children and uh, young adolescents are crazy for opera singing. 
but sometimes a 16 year old voice not sometimes always is not made for singing a Wagner opera music can play an important role in the intellectual emotional physical social and spiritual development of every child we must study how to make more people accessible to good music through singing South Africa needs versatile choral conductors and your music education system here and Kodai method can be a role model for that. What we also need is to collect the different folk songs from the ethnic groups and make them available to other ethnic groups. And we need new compositions. Contemporary music is able to express the needs of our times. If you only perform music from the past, nothing will be left from us in 100 years time. And that's exactly what Kodai mentioned 80, 90 years ago. In, in any case, you must always know where you come from. You must always be in the background and never about you where you like, exactly come from. So that's what the important thing I've learned is that it's always taking my mind to know that they're from the background. Thank you for your attention. In my previous life at the cathedral, I, I, w I worked a lot with, with children. And uh, I always made the observation that, for example, until the children are nine years old, uh, singing and rhythm is very natural for them. So I think it's inherent in all human beings, but we lose it in our Western tradition. So we simply stop moving and making music. It's also in, in some, some um, when you study singing at a university, some voice teacher, so have a lot of attention on your posture. You're not allowed to move. Um, we try different things. For example, with my boys' choir, I often allow them to conduct themselves when, when they sing. That helped a lot. So they focus more on the movements. I think it's, um, it's a universal thing. We want to move to music. And we are being constrained in Europe, like you're saying, yes. most of the musical uh, uh, training is not yes. really accepted. Or, and you look at the American uh, musicians, most of them are also trained in marching bands. And you can hear the difference in the, in the symphonic orchestra. True. And you focus on movement and body language and you train your body. I mean, there's a different way. And so you speak uh, contemporary with some of the album was called Move Your Heart and it reminds you of solo. And, it, and that <laughs> makes sense. I mean, when you move your body, then the music can become so also. Mm. And I think that's something we have to think about in terms of musical training, that we let the bodily function including dance and mm. bodily posture. It's true. And, um, we can also divide between an inner movement and an outer movement because um, for some music you, you cannot simply add uh, body movements. But I think if you, you are able to feel a rhythm, and I think a rhythm that's a Western thing, we, we count rhythm. And that's not possible, we have to feel it. A rhythm, rhythm is a thing we have to feel in our bodies. And that's very natural, for example. All my, all my, my, my black African uh, conducting students, they simply can move. 
I often have very highly intellectual students from other ethnic backgrounds. They understand music, they have score reading skills. This is incredible. But they struggle with, with a natural movement. They struggle with a simple idea just to indicate a phrase or a crescendo with one hand or a decrescendo while keeping a pulse in the other hand. So that's interesting. It's and I think it's a normal um, normal thing that, that we are able to move to a rhythm. But we oppress it in our Western cultures. Also my, my point, you have not talked a lot during the symposium about, you talk about, I mean, the children sing, but you should also have them dance, keep dancing after they are like eight, nine, mm -hmm. because that's part of the music of children. True. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. What we started, we started, um, I cannot live without a proper chamber choir. I'm a chamber choir person. And we started a chamber choir, multi-ethnic chamber choir at the university. And what we did is we asked composers to write new music for us. And there is a lot of, of South African composer who try to incorporate these folk songs, uh, this music, in, in quite complicated choral music. Mm. And I think this is a very good way to do it. Um, because then something very new, uh, you can create something very, very new. So that is, that is for me, uh, a key solution. Not to separate these songs and to say, look, we, we are going to sing it exactly the way the uh, uh, Black African Choir does it, because it's not possible. You don't have this sound. You don't have this perception. And uh, in Germany, I listen to a lot of, of German choirs singing African folk music. Uh, it's always a little bit poor. Because in their culture, this folk music is part of their life. And what we do is we take it as a concert piece. So we change the whole environment where this music is in. So, and uh, this is, um, then th we, we don't have, we don't have this, this real feeling then for the music. I hope that answers your question. It's a very complicated question, sorry. Uh, it's fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you.